All right, next. So I'm making a new type layer here, and it's going to be belittled. And so I change the Latin text into the text I want. Right. And sometimes you can work this stuff this stuff out ahead of time. I can put spaces between. I can play with the point size. Right? But I can also just select one and hold down option and play with the kerning, the spacing in between the letters if I need to. But this looks very straightforward. It doesn't look really playful. So what I might play with is going between these two typefaces, the MLP friendship is magic versus the MLP regular, right? And then playing with different sizes and spacings and kind of customizing this. What's funny is using the type tool in Illustrator in this way is just like using it in a word program. And so in my reference, I actually did this in Word. And I just played with the placement of my little donkey just as assets. So if you do that, because sometimes you just find a, a cool typeface and you're not wanting to work with Illustrator. Come on, open up. You can work between these programs. A lot of this project is about working between Illustrator and Photoshop, but you can also take type from a PowerPoint presentation that you're working on, from a Word document. Remember, type is a vector file. Oh, I don't want this, though. Get that out of the way. So I'm just going to steal this type, actually just the belittled part, copy it, go to my text layer, using the type tool, select it all, and then just paste it in, right? And I can get that solution <laughs> almost here. Thought it would work a little bit better. Let's let's get it to work. Thought the sizing and stuff would come over. But this shows me what I was thinking, right? Another way, if I didn't want to deal with this at all, I make the typeface in Photoshop. This is all that kind of creative problem solving of digital imaging. And I can pretend that this is a sketch, right? So if I view it, let's see, without the markup, I'm trying to get rid of the, it doesn't like the spacing and all that. Let's see, or if I save it, here we go. If I fail, if I uh, save it as a PDF, I'm gonna learn about all different types of file format. This just shows some creative problem solving. If I don't wanna have to work out all the font selections and space selections there. I can save it as a PDF. Gotta find where that, I didn't save it to the desktop, so let me do that again, just so I can easily find it. Command D, as a PDF. That's gonna get rid of these little autocorrect things. And then I can do a screen grab of it, and then I can live trace that screen grab and not have to worry about converting the text into outlines as long as everything is, is spelled correctly, right? So I'm just gonna open it in preview. Of course, these are all the programs that were really slowing down my, my computer earlier. So now I have it as a PDF. I can open it, make it big in preview, make it full screen. All I need is belittled. Make it as big on the screen as I can. Vectors are pretty forgiving. Command Shift 4 for a targeted screen grab. Grab belittled. There we go. I'm just trying to have fun with it. Go back to the desktop. Bring that into Illustrator. <laughs> Need to close some of these. I'm going to keep that because there's a skull I wanted to replace these hearts with. Bring that in. And now I can live trace this. Right. I'm going to do it as a black and white logo because I want as much detail in there as possible. But I need to change that so that it ignores the whites. 
So I want the options for tracing. Come on, give me those. There we go. Helpful to, to lock the other thing so it doesn't get confused. Okay, so black and white logo, go to the advanced options. I need to ignore the white. So I only want those black shapes. And then I can play with simplifying it a little bit, maybe making fewer paths. But actually, I think it came in really well. So let's just expand it. Check it with the small selection tool. There we go. So now I have that text all kind of worked out. And then I can just use the large selection tool, the black arrow, hold down shift so it doesn't distort, and fit it in underneath my rainbow. And that gives me all the little um, spacing and offsets and kind of fun that I'd already played with with the typeface before. It also allows me to do something like this. So where I put it in, whoops, and then I give the whole thing a stroke. So I'm going to give it a white stroke. I can play with it being a little wavy. No, I like it straight. Uniform. Let's try, you can do decimal points for your point sizes. Let's try two and a half, 2.5. See, and then you see it's cut out a little bit of the rainbow. So I think maybe two, I'm gonna have to redraw some of it. Okay, good. So let's do let's do two. Okay, now I like how it's showing up, but I don't like this little flaw in the eye. That's actually in the typeface. So I'm going to use the pencil tool to clean that up. Right, just straighten it out, and then I can smooth it if I need to. All of these type things are pretty smooth, so I'm going to set my pencil to be really smooth. There's another eye. Oh, no, there isn't. Okay, there's just one. All right. Now, I'm going to do um, something I was showing you when we were doing the logo design. I'm going to use the blob brush, which is solid black with no stroke. Whoops. And so I need to set it to that once I use it. And I'm going to fill in these hearts using the blob brush. There's still an empty path there that will show me where they go, but I want to change those hearts into skulls. And there's a bunch of ways I can do that, but I'm going to show you one way. Okay. And I might change this into a skull too, we'll see. Get rid of those image trace options, but I just nest them in there. So now in that PDF, I also saved, this is just stuff I was playing with on on a public computer, and I just wanted to save them for myself. These cute little, you know, hand-drawn skulls. I want to use something like that. So what I'm going to do, even though they're pretty low res, I'm going to do a screen grab of this one. And I'm going to bring that in to Illustrator. Then I'm going to live trace it. It's a black and white logo, but I need to use advanced options to ignore the white. 
Actually, I'm not going to ignore the white this time. I'll show you why. And then I hit expand. And then I'm going to use the small selection tool to select the white and then just delete the white on the outside but keep the white on the inside. Then I can use this and I can, with this large selection tool, scale it down. I'm going to make a duplicate of it. Copy, edit, paste, and scale my copies down to replace the hearts in my letters. And I can play little variations on them, some bigger, some smaller, different tilts. Copy, paste, play with them, even change them left to right, make them larger, make them smaller. Oops. If you're having trouble isolating what you're working on, just lock the paths you're not using. See how that works? Steal this one, copy, paste it. Using all the advantages of digital here. And then maybe I'm going to blob brush this eye to be a little different. Fully customized, but this time I'll blob brush, make it a lot smaller. So we're talking really tiny things here. It's pressure sensitive. I want to um, blob brush with white. Whoops, I don't want to change it. So I'm going to give it a little bit of an expression. Just that. And then I can decide against that. <laughs> Now these are all options we have. I want the white to be filled in. So this is a black and white EPS type, not just black shapes, right? Okay, so I have my belittled. And if I move that all onto the gray, you can see where the white is being used. So I want my rainbow and everything. I don't see my rainbow paths. Oh, here they are. Okay, so I'm going to take all of these, select them all, unlock them so I can select them. Hold down Shift and Command, select multiples, and then move them off onto the gray. So I can start to see how this looks, right? I can decide the my, I, I can just decide I like it, so I'm going to create outlines. I'm working kind of fast here. And then I can, you see how they're overlapping there? This is something for script fonts. I don't want to leave them separate because then if I add a stroke to it, it will outline around the script font. It will look bad. So I use my Pathfinder tool while they're overlapping and I merge them together. Then I can add a stroke. And let's make it a two-point stroke right around it. And if there's anything I need to clean up, now I can access the actual anchor points, especially where those came together, right? Because it's not quite as smooth as I want it, so I can use the pencil tool and smooth it out. But otherwise, Cream Puff looks like a pretty, pretty clean font, pretty clean typeface to use. Now everything is outlined. And I'm just missing the donkey part, right? All right. So, actually, I might use a heart as well. I like the idea of kind of a skull being at one end of the rainbow and maybe a heart being at the other. 